year-end sales event is going on now at the Yarman Ford Indianola. Now, through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at the Yarman Ford Indianola. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. 
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ankeny Centennial High School on this Friday evening for some Friday night hoops. It's the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars, ranked fifth in the Class 5A rankings, taking on the number two ranked Valley Tigers. Good evening, everyone. Happy holidays. Blake Walker with you here this evening for a great doubleheader, and it starts out with two top five programs to start here in Class 5A. Ankeny Centennials 3-1 on the season, number five in Class 5A. Valley comes in at number two, off to a hot start at 5-0. and oh. The Tigers wins over Waukee Northwest, and Val or Dowling put everybody on the map. Ankeny Centennial got a win over number two Pleasant Valley, but then struggled mightily against Dowling Catholic the last time they were out seven days ago, losing 62-34. Ankeny Centennial won the match between these two programs last year on January 7th, 40-34, but before that, Valley had won five straight, and ever since 2014, the Tigers have led the series 10-3. Elise Yeager is the one to watch for the Valley Tigers. She's an all-sport athlete. You knew her for volleyball. Well, most people know her for basketball, and that's what she's going to college for. She's headed to Northern Iowa to play for the Panthers in basketball, averaging 6.8 points per 16.8 points per contest and 57% from the floor, 40% from beyond the three-point line. She is the big leader down low for Valley and as a team. And on the other side, it's Maya Crawford and Jaden Pratt, the juniors. There's a lot of juniors on this Ankeny Centennial roster. In fact, there's no seniors. This is an all-junior, sophomore, freshman lineup for Ankeny Centennial. They will graduate no one this year, and it's a building year, if you will, after losing the seniors that they did last year. But tonight, they look for an upset to get back into the top three against the Valley Tigers, who look hot and ready to go to start the season at least. It's still early, it's early December, there's a lot of basketball to be played. We expect not a lot of points tonight. Very, both teams, very good defensively. Only giving up 33 points a game is Valley, only giving up 37 points a game is Centennial. We'll step aside for a quick break and get you back for your starting lineups. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Ask Joe, why do you often say Westside Auto instead of Westside Auto Pros? Because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The Westside Auto lifetime warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network here at Ankeny Centennial High School. We're going to send it down to your PA announcer for your starting lineups. Tonight is Centennial's annual Go Gold Childhood Cancer Night, where we wear gold and come together in unity to raise money and awareness in our daily fight against childhood cancer. Stop out in the lobby for the many ways you can contribute tonight. We'd also like to give a big welcome to all the students, staff, and families from Northwest Elementary. 
Street here in attendance tonight. With that, it's time to meet our starting lineups. First, for the Vintage City Tigers, at guard, a 5'7 sophomore, number three, Curry Rose. At guard, for the Jaguars, a 5'6 junior, number one, Ava Martin. Side for a break, and we'll be back for your opening tip. Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Now, through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to Ankeny Centennial, where the Ankeny Community Chorus wraps up our national anthem, and we are ready to go. Number five, Centennial hosts number two, West Des Moines Valley, and a top five showdown in the CIML in Class 5A. Blake Walker with you here this evening, and we are ready to go for a doubleheader tonight, both girls and boys basketball. We appreciate everyone for joining us here tonight. Pet Band is here 
It's Childhood Cancer Awareness Night. They're raising money outside for childhood cancer research. And we're in for a good basketball game. Both these two teams defensive at their best. Expect low scoring, or at least the statistics say that it's low scoring tonight. Nice and cool outside. It's warm inside, I can tell you that. I don't know if it's just me, but we're ready to go here. Coach Utah's Valley Tigers and Coach DeYoung's Centennial Jaguars. So, Elise Yeager will tip it off against Jaden Pratt. And we're off and running. Valley in all black with orange stripes. Centennial in all white with black stripes. Tigers are 5-0 to start the young season. Centennial is 3-1. Only loss coming to Dowling Catholic, 60-34 on the last time they played one week ago. That ball goes right through Elise Yeager's legs, and it will go to Centennial. And it will be Maya Crawford to bring it up for Ankeny Centennial. Crawford this season averaging 11 and a half points per contest. They go right down low to Jaden Pratt and Pratt gets met at the rim by Avery Moon. Both teams also like to have a little bit of offense, but that's pretty even at best. 57 points per game for Valley, 56 and a half per game for Centennial. And so statistically, both teams line up pretty evenly. The one big discrepancy is that Dowling Catholic game. Centennial lost to uh, the Maroons. Valley took care of Dowling Catholic with ease. We'll see how that translates here tonight. Pratt at the top of the key. Centennial will slow things down. They're aggressive. Very good defensively like I talked about. Pratt gets down low and one. A beautiful feed by Finley Blackmore. And Jaden Pratt finishes it off and will go to the line to shoot one. They're going to get the foul on Avery Moon. That's her first personal foul. And Pratt will go to the line to shoot one, and she splashes it home, and Centennial leads 3-0. Keep an eye on Elise Yeager. She's got a little bit of a size advantage down low. They're going to keep two girls on her at all times. Layup not going to fall. Yeager knocks that one out of bounds. Good attempt by Ashley Brown, the sophomore, to go to the hoop. And the Jags will get it back with a three-point lead. Centennial won the last time these two teams played last year back in, or this year, I should say, back in January. Pratt goes all the way to the hoop, tried to do a little bit of a stutter step. Jaeger trips her own girl, but Valley comes back the other way. Yeager at the top of the key, wanting to swing it around to the top. Brown down low to Elise. Elise off the glass and good. Elise Yeager, you and I commit. Leads the team at almost 17 points per game. And 57% from the floor. She's not going to miss much. Takes high quality shots down low. Baseline drive. Nicely done all the way to the hoop by Ava Martin. Ava one to pass up on the three, goes all the way to the hoop and makes the most out of it. Jags have the lead by three. Brown trying to figure something out here at the top of the key, almost traveled with it. Eventually hands it off. Long three-pointer from the top of the key, splashes home for Ty Lee White, the freshman. Valley bringing on a couple of freshmen this season that are going to make big impacts. White, just one of those. 5-5 five, five tie early with 5-13 to go here in the first quarter. Moon goes for a steal, and Pratt holds serve at the top of the key. Crawford trying to take it baseline, gets it stripped away. Pratt on the floor. Everybody's on the floor for it. Eventually it's knocked in the air, and it will be Valley basketball after Pratt tried to get away with it from the tie-up. Really good heads-up play by Jaden Pratt to chase it all the way down the floor. And the Tigers will throw in underneath the basket. 
It'll be Ashley Brown, the sophomore. Jaeger in the corner for three, splashes it home. She's got five here early for the Tigers. She can extend her range just a little bit. Crawford all the way, runs right into Jaeger, and that's a charge. Elise got her legs set just in time. One thing about Valley, they're not very deep in terms of their roster. Take a look at the replay here. On the other side of the basket for Jaeger, just comes off a screen, nicely done, set up well. Pratt couldn't get there. But only one, two, three, four, five girls are on the bench for Valley. So only 10 girls truly on the varsity roster. So they can't go too deep, and usually they don't. A lot of CIML schools like to keep it pretty small. Avery Moon for three. That one won't go off side iron. And a rebound taken away by Pratt. All the way down the floor. Tilly Smith tries a corner three. That won't go. Good rebound by Jaeger. Boxing out Ava Martin. And the Tigers look to push again. Long three for Brown. That won't fall. And Findlay Blackmore is on the rebound. Crawford, coast to coast, lost it off the foot. Centennial's going to catch a break. It was hit last second by a foot kickball violation. Corey Rose checks in for Valley. And Olivia Adams will check in for Ankeny Centennial. Three forty-two to go here in the first quarter. Valley on top. Crawford at the top of the key. She'll go right over to the wing to Lizzie Beam. Crawford lost it on the way up. Tried to go up with her left hand and just slips out of her grasp. Beam was the one that checked in for Centennial, not Olivia Adams. Olivia Adams is on Valley. Tigers in control by three with 3.20 to go here in the quarter. Jaeger leads all with five. Valley doing a good job moving away from the ball. That three-pointer is not going to go. Jaeger's on the rebound. She goes up strong with one hand. Can't get it to fall, but she'll go to the line to shoot two. Jaden Pratt gets called on the foul. And Elise Yeager will go to the line to shoot two free throws. And the first one's good. Yeager, a 61% free throw shooter coming into tonight. A couple more substitutions. Kendall McDaniel checks in. A little bit of size on the floor now at 6-1 for McDaniel. Jaeger in and out on the second. 9-5 for Valley. Kylan Smith is also in for Centennial as the Jags try to find some offense. A little bit of what looks like a 2-3 zone here. Pratt tries to go one-on-one -on -one with Jaeger and almost got it turned over. Long three-pointer is short, and McDaniel and Smith will rip after it, and we're going to have a jump ball, and it will be going to Centennial. Yeah, so a little bit of a 2-3 zone here for the Tigers to start things out defensively. 2.45 to go here in the quarter. Crawford, baseline, just nothing open. Valley's doing a good job securing the bottom side of the basket. Crawford tries a floater, that won't go, and Jaeger's on the glass. And Valley will push. McDaniel hounded down low, back up top, three-pointer from the top of the key, and it goes. Ty Lee White, her second three-pointer of the evening, and Ankeny Centennial needs a timeout. 12-5, Valley leads. It will be, let's see how long of a timeout we'll get here, 32nd timeout, so we'll stay here. So White and Jaeger, the only two scorers for Valley. Take a look at the replay. Again, it's just a lot of screens here. 
And that time, everybody just kind of fell asleep. Crawford didn't get to the assignment. And White has got two three-pointers so far. Jaden Pratt, Ava Martin are the only scorers so far for Ankeny Centennial. Don't forget, coming up after this one, 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes after the conclusion of this one, you can catch the boys game. But make sure to stay around and check out our game break show in between. 12-5, Valley on top with 2.13 to go here in the first quarter. And the Jags will get it here off the inbound. The last two times these two have played, the scores were 40 to 34 and 44 to 40. And they split. So stats say that <laughs> we might not see more than 45 tonight again, but Valley's off to a pretty good start here. Centennial's still searching for offense. And they can't seem to get anything open at the top of the key either. Crawford all the way through contact gets the lamp to go off glass. I guarantee that was one thing Coach DeYoung was talking to his girls about. Get to the basket, at least try to get fouled, or hold serve at the top of the key. Valley looking good already with three three-pointers. White at the top of the key will float it down low to Jaeger, but it's last touched by a Jaguar. Valley knows that the post play is realistically their biggest strength, and that's exactly what they're going to with McDaniel and Jaeger both on the floor. That one's almost knocked away, and it's able to be recovered by Kendall. Arid pass goes wide by McDaniel, and it will be Jaguar basketball. Good crowd on hand here tonight. I think they said element, a lot of elementary school students were here. Pet bands here, you can definitely hear that. Good crowd on hand on this Friday evening. It's pretty much how the CIML goes. Monday or Friday basketball, sometimes some Tuesday, sometimes it's Thursday, but you know Friday's going to be the CIML basketball. Pratt tried to knock it off of Jaeger, and she did not get it. Jaeger forces the turnover, and it will be going back to Valley with 102 to go here in the quarter. Telly Smith is out for Ankeny Centennial. Jags visibly frustrated, as for good reason. Valley's defense is not letting them get where they want to go here. About 27 seconds separate shot clock and game clock, and Elise Yeager got caught up with Jaden Pratt, and Yeager gets called on the foul. That should be her first foul. Elise is still asking for an explanation by the official. The Jags get it back down five with 47 seconds to go. I would say they could go for a two for one, but I don't see many high schools try it. Pratt down low, nice feed. Kylan Smith. Her first basket of the night. And now about one second, separate shot clock and game clock. Nice move by Brown, that one's almost knocked away. Jaeger into the free hand, long three pointer by Number three, Kari Rose, and that splash is home. How about four three-pointers by the Tigers in this first quarter, and the lead is back to six. Top of the key, Blackmore. Trying to find somebody. They go back to Crawford, two seconds. Trying to put it up at the buzzer. Not even going to get a chance. Nicely done by Kari Rose and Elise Yeager to hold serve. And Valley looking good early, 15-9. Tigers on top. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on the 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegades starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. 
free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Welcome back to Ankeny Centennial High School, where the Jaguars are on top of the Valley Tigers. 15 to 9 is your score after one. Elise Yeager and Tylee White lead the Tigers with six apiece. Jaden Pratt leads the Jags with three. Four three pointers by the Valley Tigers have them out in front here to start the second quarter. Not to mention very good post play on defense and on offense. Lit got caught up in the corner. They'll hand it over to White. And back to Lit. Picked up by Crawford. Ten seconds on the shot clock here. Valley looking for something. Elon Lit to the corner. Not saying that's their game, but see how everything shakes out here in the second quarter. Blackmore loses it, and it's picked right back up by White. Ashley Brown sends it to a trailing Avery Moon, but it's picked off. Both teams having a couple issues with the turnovers. There was almost another one. Heads up play by Pratt. Ava Martin, floater inside, is good off glass. Her fourth point of the night cuts the lead back down to four for Centennial. Valley's led pretty much the whole thing. Moon, baseline, fights her way down low, can't get it to fall. White on the rebound, nicely done. Jaeger for three at the wing, can't quite get it to go. And Martin's on the rebound. Great defense on both sides of the floor here for Valley and Ankeny Centennial. Pratt down low, can't quite hang on. Her and Jaeger collide again. <laughs> a lot of contact. That was obviously not intentional for both. Wrong place, wrong time. Jaeger on a trailer. Elise works her way down low, takes a dribble, puts it on the bottom of the hoop, turns around and gets it to go off glass. She didn't give up easy. Kept hanging in there. Centennial did not foul. It was clean all the way, and Jaeger was able to work it out. Quick move by Tilly Smith. And now Crawford gets to a cutting Martin. Martin gets swat back by Elise Jaeger. Jaeger's doing everything. 17-11. Here comes Valley back the other way. Moon clear lane to the basket, puts it up and in. Valley extends the lead again, and Coach DeYoung wants a timeout as the Jaguars looking for something here. They'll go full timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Ask Joe, why do you often say West Side Auto instead of West Side Auto Pros? Because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The Westside Auto lifetime warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, Westside Auto pros. Welcome back to Central Iowa Sports Network. You want to talk about hustle and Elise Yeager in the same sentence? Well, we'll gladly do it for you. Elise Yeager showed some hustle. Take a look at this attempt at a basket. One dribble, takes a bump, can't get it to go. Turns around and gets it high off the glass. Did not quit. She leads her team with eight so far. And Valley leads overall 19-11 to 11 in the middle of the second quarter. Blake Walker with you here this evening from Ankeny Centennial High School. A great night for basketball in the CIML. 5.19 to go here in the second, and the Jags will have the ball out of the timeout. Maya Crawford will bring it up for the Jags. She tries to go baseline. Ava Martin for three at the wing. Can't find the bottom of the basket. Good rebound, though. Martin got bumped by Jaeger and just tosses it out. It's a couple times that 
Centennial has tried to go down low, and Jaeger at least just stands there and really doesn't have to do much and is able to stand her ground defensively. Kylan Smith, though, got to give credit to her on that rebound. At least gave Ankeny Centennial another chance. Five to go here in the first half, 1911 Valley. White, ooh, thought about a three. Boy, she's quick, and she's only a freshman. <laughs> Learn the name Tylee White as we go throughout. McDaniel got doubled, and we're going to have a three-second call down low on McDaniel. Jaeger getting much-needed rest on the bench, but I will say when her and McDaniel were in at the same time, it sure did cause a lot of problems for Centennial. Jack's trying to get rolling here. Pratt, top of the key, goes full court to the other side to Blackmore. Boy, Valley just does such a good job jumping on every opportunity and getting on every passing lane. Crawford tries to go baseline, gets blocked by McDaniel. So McDaniel's getting in on the action here defensively. White for another three. That's off the front iron, but it's taken back away by Kari Rose. Valley definitely doing a little bit better here on the rebounding side. Martin almost had a jump pass. Then she tries again, and she saves it and has a turnover. Great hustle by Ava Martin. Crawford doubled into the corner to Pratt. Pratt fires a long three. That won't fall. Good box out underneath by Moon, and here comes Valley back the other way. Boy, even when Valley doubled, they were able to recover pretty nicely. Just very quick, hands-up defense by the Tigers, and Centennial's trying to stay in tow here. Only 19 points for Valley. Any other team, you'd be like, well, that's pretty good, but... Tigers defense is doing a lot. Long three-pointer by Litt, and that one goes. Elon Litt with the three. That's her first bucket of the night. The lead is 11, largest of the night. Ava Martin tries to respond. Just can't find the bottom. Pratt skies for the rebound. Jags have yet to hit a triple tonight. Blackmore tries to go inside. Crawford tries for three, and that won't go. Martin's on the rebound, and she gets fouled by McDaniel underneath. That is the first foul of the entire second quarter, and we have two minutes and 52 seconds left. Let's see what they're calling here. Foul does stay. I think they were just trying to figure out who it was on. It is on Kendall McDaniel. Kendall will check out, as will Kari Rose and Elise Yeager and Ashley Brown check back into the basketball game. Crawford picked up by Brown. A lot of times Centennial just feel like second-guessing their passing, as they should. I mean, Valley is all over the place. Just over two and a half to go here in the first half. What a defensive performance here. Centennial only has two points this quarter. Valley's got seven. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Saved in the backcourt by Tilly Smith. Crawford doubled. Back outside, Tilly Smith along three, and it won't go. And it will go out of bounds and go right back to Valley. Jags have had good looks from three, just can't find the bottom of the bucket. Centennial wins over Roosevelt, Pleasant Valley, and Irvindale this season. Valley with wins over Waukee Northwest, Dowling, Kennedy, Washington, Cedar Rapids, Washington, and Irvindale. Jaeger on the low post, off glass and good. Great post play by the senior. 24 to 11. Crawford back outside, Blackmore for three, and finally Centennial finds the bottom of the basket beyond the three-point line. That's just the fifth point of this quarter for the Jags. And it's back within 10.
Tigers back out, top of the key, lit, waiting for somebody to get open. And Moon's at the wing. Nice quick move. Avery floats, won't go. Able to force the rebound back to the Tigers. Yeager's wide open for three, and it won't fall. Crawford's on the boards. Jags trying to close back in just a little bit here before the buzzer sounds for the halftime break. Pratt from mid-range. High off glass, no good. Let's see if Valley wants to slow this thing down. Ellen Litt holds at the top of the key. Very, very good first half by the number two team in Class 5A. And Coach Utah says, let's take a break here and look over some things. Coach Utah at the helm of the Valley Tigers. Obviously behind Coach Joe Segris for many years. Very, very good program built at Valley over the last 10 years. Obviously Segrist took a year off of coaching in general and now is coaching at Norwalk for the Norwalk girls basketball program who are number three in class 4A. Went from unranked to number three in a week. I have never seen that before, but Coach Segrist is doing what he loves, and I know he still keeps tabs on this Valley program heavily, and I know he deeply cares about a lot of these girls. He still coached a lot of these girls. He coached Elise Yeager and all these seniors on this team, so I know he keeps up with the Valley Tigers as much as he can. The Coach Utah's doing a great job here with the Tigers. Both teams' rich histories here the last couple seasons just making it to the state tournament. You can always bet that these two will be there. Valley's looking for a big win here to add to their resume of two top five wins in the first couple weeks of the season. Johnston is still the by far number one, but Valley gets Johnston soon. Jaeger tried to go after a loose ball, can't get it, and the Jags will get it back with 32 seconds to go. Centennial looks content to roll with the last shot here. In a low scoring half. Like I said, last two times these teams have met, nobody's even reached 45 points. Pratt is wide open, so she'll just shoot and it can't go. I feel like she had to shoot and she did. Nine seconds to go for Valley. Here comes Lit back across the timeline with six seconds to go. Lit waiting. Step back, three at the horn, won't go. And that will do it for the end of the first half. It is Valley in control here early, 24-14 in a defensive battle over the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. We'll step aside and be back. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive, Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Get up to $5,500 off MSRP on new Sierra 1500s, plus 0.9% APR for 36 months. Up to $8,000 off MSRP on new Silverado 1500 Turbo Max. And save on the 2024 Equinox with a $500 rebate, plus 1.9% APR for 36 months. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive, Knoxville. DeArmondChevyGMC.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Hey you two, we all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snap.
Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Blake Walker with you here this evening. The Valley Tigers rank number two in the latest polls. Currently sit atop 24 to 14 at your halftime break. It was 15 to nine at the end of the first quarter and now 24 14 here. Low scoring as we expected. Ellen Litt with three points for Valley. Again, all unofficial. Kari Rose with three. Elise Yeager with 10. Tylee White with six, and Avery Moon with two. And then for Centennial, Ava Martin with four, Jane Pratt with three, Maya Crawford with two, Finley Blackmore with three, and Kylan Smith with two is how we set things up here so far. Don't forget, in between games, to catch our game break show, we'll be going over rankings and much more to get you in between our two games tonight. Obviously, this current game and then the boys basketball side of Valley and Ankeny Centennial. Halftime update, Dowling Catholic leads over top of Waukee, 31 to 28 on the girls side. Waukee undefeated to start, but they're still six. They're not quite into the top five yet, but the Warriors look good under head coach Franklin. Emily Sorensen and company look good against Waukee Northwest. They start slow, <laughs> but they get things figured out as the game goes on. Keep an eye on Waukee. They're gonna be a tough team this season. They're still young, given all circumstances, but they're a fun team nonetheless. Keep an eye out for Waukee. Most of the CIML, very competitive. Southeast Polk can get you a couple good games here and there. Valley, Ankeny, Ankeny Centennial, Dowling Catholic, Waukee Northwest, Waukee. Every single night, night in and night out, you can get a great game. You know that already. And we expect such things here tonight where Valley leads 24 to 14. The defensive side has been big for Valley. Elise Yeager has looked great on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Plenty of turnovers galore. Valley has just taken more advantages beyond the three-point line. They've hit four three-pointers so far, or five three-pointers so far, and that's how we sit so far in general as Valley looks to continue and move to 6-0 on the young season. We're going to take a little bit of a longer break, and we'll be back for your second half of action. You're watching Valley and Ankeny Centennial. Tigers lead by 10. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Now, through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wins. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade with the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done. 
faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Joe, why do you often say West Side Auto instead of West Side Auto Pros? Because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The West Side Auto lifetime warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, West Side Auto Pros. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Lake Walker with you here this evening. Valley on top of Ankeny Centennial. 24 to 14 is your score. Defensive as we thought it would be. Valley's hit five three-pointers, and I guess you could say that's been the difference in some way as the Tigers are looking to get things back rolling here in the second half and try to extend their lead and move to 6-0 and on the young season. Centennial trying to get from dropping to straight. 1.53 left here on the clock so far. Another update for you. Waukee Northwest leads over Southeast Polk 26-19 on the girls' basketball side. Northwest trying to get things back rolling. A little bit of a slow start to the season. But nonetheless, it will be a tough team to beat, obviously, with Coach Powell at the helm. And you can expect to see more of that. Speaking of which, of what things you can expect to see here on the Central Iowa Sports Network next week, we have wrestling on Tuesday night, Ankeny and Southeast Polk. And then next Thursday, we have Valley taking on Johnston in what should be a great game for the girls. It's a one versus two battle if everything holds true. Boys side should be really good as well. Also, in January, you can expect to see a couple of public schools. We'll go to Des Moines Lincoln, Des Moines Roosevelt, get a couple of those games thrown in the mix as well. So you'll be able to catch a lot of the action from all across the metro in both the CIML and Iowa Alliance conferences. 24-14 is your score. Both teams warming up out of the halftime break. It was a very quick first half. There was only one foul in the entire second quarter, I believe. So there was not a lot of stopping. It was a lot of up and down the floor. You could tell a couple girls on Centennial and Valley 
both looked exhausted at the end of the quarter. And like I said, both teams haven't gone very deep, per to say. So we'll see how everything plays out here in the second half as Valley looks to complete the game here. And don't forget, coming up after this one, the boys' basketball game between Valley and Ankeny Centennial. Luke Winkle and the boys will look to take down. There's no rankings yet officially, but Valley is by far the number one team in boys' basketball. So Luke Winkle and the team will look to get a huge win against the high-flying Valley Tigers that you could say could be compared to Phi Slam Ajama. They just don't really have anyone tall. They just have a lot of really good athletes all across the floor. There's a really, lot of really good athletes across the floor here as this young Ankeny Centennial team will get the ball first. I don't even know what you call them young. They don't have any seniors. It's a lot of juniors, but a lot of the juniors played last year. So who knows? We'll see what happened out of the halftime break. See what Coach DeYoung cooked up defensively or offensively at the halftime break as we're off and running at half number two. Smith back outside to Crawford. Crawford's going to go all the way and goes through traffic and gets the layup to go to a huge roar from the bench. And I guarantee that was brought up at the halftime break. Get to the basket and get through contact. Because nobody went to the line <laughs> in the second quarter. Lead is cut back down to eight. White for three off a screen, and it goes. Boy, is she talented. She's got nine, all beyond the three-point line. Valley has found a talented freshman. Down low to Pratt. She is doubled. Seems like every time Centennial gets a little chunk into the lead, Valley just able to respond very quickly. Crawford all the way and gets fouled, and that's exactly what Centennial wants to do as Maya will go to the line to shoot two for the Jags. Crawford a 57% free throw shooter coming in, 11 of 19. Averaging 11 and a half points per contest that leads the team. She's got four, make it five tonight. I will say, it is hotter in here, and Crawford has sleeves on, so she's, uh, she's getting a real sweat in tonight, especially how intense things have been on defense. 27-18. That one's almost knocked away. Moon's able to pick it up, and here's Brown. Centennial very active, trying to switch down low on Elise Yeager and Pratt. And we're going to have three seconds in the lane on Yeager. Elise fell to the ground, and that kind of didn't help her with the three seconds as she couldn't get back up in time. Her and Pratt have been going at it all night long. Not like physical, physical, but they're definitely bumping each other, trying to get an advantage down low. Feels like a very crucial possession here for the Jags. Pratt, nice play down low to Crawford. She didn't shoot, though. Pratt goes inside, floats it, and it won't go, and Maya is on the rebound. Boy, I, I don't know if Maya thought she was covered or what, but she just did not turn around to try to take a look at the basket. Jags trying to circle back around 22 seconds on the shot clock with six minutes to go. Crawford, baseline, right hand, yes. The Jags are going to their scorer, and it's working. Lead is back down to seven, and Maya has got six to start the quarter. All six of Centennial's points. Brown waiting on a screen from Jaeger, barely got it away. Jaeger and Pratt continue to just go at it against each other, and a foul will be called on Pratt. The thing is, they're keeping it pretty cordial between the two because I don't think they've said a single word to each other. They're just very aggressive, trying to do everything they can. Pratt went to the official to look for an explanation. Now Coach Utah's talking to the official here. White for three again, rattles out. But it looked good. Under five and a half to go. Pratt, or Crawford will race the floor, jumps right into a double team. Back outside, Blackmore for three, and way off. 
I think she got a little too excited. Somebody came screaming down the floor. Long down court pass will go wide. And the Jags get it back. Centennial catches a break. Although Centennial has had their a couple turnovers tonight, Valley has also had their fair share of turnovers. Pratt waiting for someone at the top of the key. Instead, she'll put it on the floor. Goes outside to Tilly Smith, and Smith travels. Try to take a little bit of a jump step, and the foot slips just a little bit, and Valley will get it back. A lead is seven for the Tigers. Already 4.44 to go here in the quarter. Again, not a lot of fouls, so it moves by pretty quickly. Lit, got a lane to the basket, floater won't go. Jaeger tries to sky for it and is able to shovel the rebound out to Kari Rose. Jaeger on the low block and a fight for the basketball and a jump ball and it will go to Valley. Kylan Smith will check in for Centennial. Blackmore will go to the bench. Valley off an inbound play. They've had a couple good successful ones so far. This time they just go to Jaeger in the corner. Brown almost got someone on their feet or set one to the ground. Jags will throw, or Valley will throw in here on the near side. And Moon will check out. Valley will throw in here on the near side and goes all the way up top to Yeager. Valley's gone cold just a little bit here, just from three points this quarter, and it was a white three-pointer. And that's it. Baseline drive by Litt. Nobody's there. Four seconds on the shot clock. Rose caught up. Litt, long three-pointer at the horn, and it won't go. Long, great rebound by Kylan Smith. Jaeger pokes it free, and it will still remain Ankeny Centennial basketball. Centennial crowd not happy with the officials. I think they wanted a call on somebody. In a low-scoring game like this, you can just expect it. Defenses are going to be a plenty, and they're going to be physical. Crawford almost didn't get guarded at the three-point line. Almost a triple team at the top. Valley does a good job motioning over on screens and on defense. Trying to hold that zone down. Crawford through traffic. Floater won't go. Pratt got bumped and throws it out of bounds. And Valley will get it back. Now both teams got a little cold here. Six points this quarter for the Jags. Three for Valley. And remember what I said about not reaching 45. Well, we're not on track. Pratt goes for the steal attempt on Jaeger and gets called on the foul. That's Pratt's third foul, and that is the second foul on Centennial. Really haven't had to worry about the bonus, the whole five fouls and reset thing. They're letting him play tonight. Jaeger gets fouled by Crawford. Centennial knows you got to keep it out of the hands of number five. And now it's cost him here two plays in a row trying to keep Elise away from the basketball. McDaniel over to Litt with three to go in the third quarter. White picked up. Centennial's defense has picked up a little bit here defensively. And another foul on Crawford. Tried to make a steal attempt on Jaeger. Jaeger has drawn three fouls in the last minute. 
And that's four fouls here for Centennial. Remember, one more, and Valley's going to the line to shoot two the rest of the quarter, no matter what foul it is. This could get interesting. 2.43 to go. Remember, shot clock does reset on a foul, so they get fresh 35. Litz caught up. Spins away. Jaeger down low. Goes back to McDaniel. McDaniel travels. McDaniel, a 6'1 senior. So you got two 6'1s on the court with Jaeger and her. The lead is seven. Not a lot of scoring here in this third quarter. Jags are outscoring, though, six to three. Crawford spinning. Baseline, nope, goes right back outside. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Crawford, baseline, floats it over, tried to get it to Smith, and it's stolen away by Jaeger. Back and forth we go. And by back and forth, I don't mean like we're running up the score. Jaeger tries to spin off a screen. Now her and Crawford really going at it on the low post. Jaeger down low, Smith two hands up, hands off to McDaniel. McDaniel goes up and out of bounds, no foul called. 134 to go here in the quarter. Remember, one more foul by the Jags, and the Tigers are going to go to the line here. So we'll see if they're careful here. McDaniel awaiting Jaeger at the corner. And we're going to have a shot clock violation. I completely, I wasn't even looking. I completely forgot. I thought because it went out. Maybe it got turned back over, but shot clock violation on Valley. Nobody, I don't, not even Valley fans were really looking at it. So Centennial will get it here back on the other side. Trailing by seven. You'd look in the book and say, well, it's a win. We've only given up three points in this quarter, but Centennial just can't quite get that offense rolling. Maya had something going in the first couple minutes. But Valley has recovered pretty nicely here. Crawford, baseline, through traffic, won't go, gets her on a rebound, and gets fouled hard by Elise Yeager. Was it in the act of shooting? No, it wasn't. So Crawford will throw it in underneath with 57 seconds to go. Smith on the outside to Blackmore. Again, another opportunity for a two for one if Centennial wants it. That one's knocked free by Jaeger and it will still remain Centennial ball. Twenty four seconds on the clock. Shot clock, I should say. Blackmore at the wing. Back up top to Pratt. Crawford, baseline, and a foul on the floor. And that takes away the shot clock here. So we'll see what Centennial wants to do here with 31 seconds to go. Big possession, as we've said all throughout this quarter. Coach Young tells Maya, back up. Let's try something on offense and give them no time on the clock. Kari Rose was guarding closely, 17 seconds to go. Maya at the corner, 10 seconds left on the clock. Crawford almost loses it. Smith picks it up and a foul on McDaniel. It's not a bad foul because now it's five seconds left and Centennial has to throw in another. Both teams now with four fouls. Lizzie Beam will check in. No, she will not. Lizzie went out and then came right back in. Five seconds to go here in the quarter. 
Crawford, baseline, turns around, floater won't go, Smith at the horn will not go as well. And she just shakes her heads and smiles. 27 to 20. It's beautiful defensive basketball here at Ankeny Centennial. We'll take a break. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Valley on top of Centennial, 27-20 as we go to the fourth quarter. Dowling Catholic leads Waukee 49-36 over at Dowling Catholic High School. So the Warriors look like they'll drop their first game of the season. Valley only has a seven-point lead, but I'd say they're looking pretty good here. They only scored three points in the third quarter, but I'd say they're still looking pretty good. Centennial scored six, all behind Maya Crawford. Nobody scored in the last six and a half minutes of the third quarter. Pratt can't get the layup to go. Smith on the rebound. She gets blocked by Jaeger. Pratt for three at the corner. That won't go. And the rebound is snagged by Litt. But yeah, both teams really just struggling to score here. Jaeger at the wing, back up top to Moon. Moon, baseline, nice spin, floater goes. And that breaks the drought for Valley at least. And the lead is back to nine. And in a game like this, nine just seems like a lot. Smith can't get the layup to fall. Good defense by Jaeger. They're going to give it to Ankeny Centennial. Both officials looking at each other, trying to think if the clock reset. Yes, it did. 7.04 to go. Crawford back up top to Pratt. Centennial's only hit one three-pointer all game. Valley's got six. And in a way, that's made the big difference. They try to go down low to Pratt. That gets knocked away, and it will be Valley basketball. Jags are trying a couple in-the-lane passes. Tigers just doing a good job cutting them off. Valley trying to put this one away. If a couple more baskets. Crawford with the steal. Maya coast to coast, stops, and gets the layup to go. If you remember, that's a lot of what Ankeny Centennial did last year, and that's what made them so good, just jumping passing lanes and getting points off turnovers. That is really the first time they've done that tonight. Lit for three. Off back iron won't grow. Huge spot here for the Jags. Pratt guarded closely by Moon. And Ava Martin all the way. Tried to fit it into Smith, a little too hard off the hands. And it will be Valley basketball. Good student section has filed in for Ankeny Centennial. You can see him there behind Jaeger. In the gold tonight for childhood cancer awareness. Lit gets around one. Nice bounce pass. Great ball movement by Valley. 
Pratt almost knocks it free. Jaeger, long three-pointer, off back iron, won't go. Crawford with another rebound. And they'll hand it off to Blackmore. Now back to Crawford, and Maya will bring it up. Blackmore tried to go baseline. Pratt will instead. Goes up against Jaeger. Good defense. I don't know. At least might have gotten a piece of it. Either way, she affected the shot. And we're closing in on five to go. If you're just tuning in, no, the quarter length isn't wrong. Crowd was getting mad about Jaeger and Pratt going against each other. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. It will be a full timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Now, through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on the 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegade starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Valley on top of Ankeny Centennial, 29 to 22, with 4:55 to go here in the fourth quarter. All defense, all defense tonight here between these two programs, like we expected. Statistics say that it was going to be that way, and it looks like unless Valley goes on a tear, the trend will continue, and this will be the third straight game between these two teams where nobody cracks 45 points. And if you're Centennial, nothing's really coming to run. You had a quick six points to start the quarter in the third by Maya Crawford. But other than that, there's just not a ton coming in bunches for either team right now. Two seconds, Jaeger floater won't fall. Jaeger on the rebound, it gets fouled by Pratt, and that's her fourth if it's on Jaden. No, they're going to get the foul on Blackmore. That's her first foul, and it will send Elise Yeager to the line to shoot two. She's already got one free throw made tonight. Elise knocks down her first. It's her first points of the second half. Granted, Valley's only got six points this half anyway. She hits them both. She's got 12 for the Tigers. And the lead is nine. That's a tough, tough amount to come back from if you're Centennial based on how this game has gone. Crawford all the way, foul on the floor. We're going to get this one on Ashley Brown, the sophomore. Centennial trying to figure out a good inbound here with 4.25 to go. Blackmore is wide open at the top. Crawford on a quick screen. Back outside to Martin. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Centennial just looking for that good shot. Crawford got bumped. Martin and Jaeger on the floor to fight for it. It's going to be a jump ball, and it will go towards Valley. So the Tigers will get it back. Tyler White checks back in. In some ways, Elise has been a huge factor in the game tonight, but Tyler White 
three three-pointers for her. I mean, that's, that's the lead right there. So the freshman stepping up big is really coming to terms here for the Tigers, trying to keep this thing out in front. White, they're trying to get it down low to Jaeger. Her and Pratt are fighting hard. Remember, Pratt's got four fouls, or three fouls. Jaeger eventually gets the rebound. Three and a half to go. Jags need a run if they want to come back into this one. Crawford, top of the key, kicks outside. Blackmore thought about a three. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Crawford will try to recover. Five seconds, Maya outside. Smith for three, no good. Rebounds by Blackmore. Martin tries a three, that won't go. And a rebound, or a foul over the top by Finley Blackmore. The three-point basket is not fallen tonight for the Jags. And it's crazy because they came in shooting 34% from the beyond the three-point line. Valley came in just shooting 28%. And Valley had taken 50 more three-pointers than the Jags have this season coming into tonight. Maya looked for another quick steal. White down low, nicely done. Can't get the turnaround layup to go. She knew she should have had it. Jags looked to push, but Valley got back pretty quickly here. Crawford spinning, turnaround, won't go. Time is running out for Centennial. Valley really no rush here, especially with how their defense has been playing. Pratt and Jaeger hit the floor again. Litt trying to go baseline. Jaeger and Pratt on the floor again, and we got another foul, and this time it's on Jaden Pratt. They're going to be happy not to guard each other at the end of the night. And like I said, they have not said a word to each other. They're just playing their game. They're literally standing face to face right now and they're not saying anything to her. Coach DeYoung's just trying to figure out what's going on here. I think he was trying to talk to Blackmore, or Coach Utah. And now both coaches are trying, <laughs> trying to figure things out. Coach Utah kept asking, did he take a timeout? They're going to take a 30-second timeout, Centennial is. So not really tempers, I'd say, but there are definitely disagreements on the floor here all across by both teams. So a quick 30-second timeout here by Centennial. I mean, it's been a physical game. When the score is 31-22, to it's not not a physical game. And people say the shot clock, blah, blah, blah. Now this has just been very good defensive basketball by both teams. And it's been aggressive. Centennial knows that they have to guard Elise Yeager down low and they're doing everything they can. Elise has drawn more than five fouls tonight. And they're just, they're staying aggressive. And both officials are talking to both head coaches here with 2.10 remaining. This game is far from over. But just the way it's gone, Centennial's really going to have to find something deep here. 35 seconds on the shot clock with 2.10 remaining. Crawford gets away with the steal. It's two on one. Maya all the way gets fouled by Litt, and she will go to the line to shoot two. Jags also only need two more fouls to send Valley to the line. That was another thing. Don't want to have to waste a ton of time on fouls when you want to start fouling. Crawford, who is the only one who has scored in this second half for Centennial, goes to the line. She misses her first. She has all eight of Centennial's points this half. Maya's second is off as well. Jaden snags it or tries to knock it away. All the way, and Crawford fouls. Utah is trying to tell his team to not go, but 
didn't see him, and it will send Valley. Nope, they was not in the act of shooting, I guess. They'll, they'll go from the floor here. That's Centennial's fourth foul of the quarter. And a moving screen on Elise Yeager. It's Elise Yeager's third foul of the ball game, 154 to go. Crawford trying to get her contact back in her eye. Looks like she got it. And we continue play with 152 to go. What a defensive battle. I don't think we'll see this in the boys' game, but you never know. Pratt, baseline, through traffic. Right hand is good. Pratt's fifth point of the night. The lead is down to seven. See how Centennial plays this here. Kari Rose at the top of the key. We'll hand off to White. White baseline, and one! A huge basket by Tylee White, the freshman. Take a look at the replay. You could tell Rose really didn't know what to do with it. White got a good screen from Yeager. Says, I'll do it myself, and gets fouled by Martin. She's going to go to the line to try to make it a 10-point game. She cannot get it to go, and the lead is still nine. Centennial is going to run. Martin, three in the corner, won't go too hard. And a foul by Crawford, and that is the fifth foul of the ball game. And that might be Crawford's fifth. And that is. Maya is done for the night. Just a simple reach across, trying to go after the basketball. Coach DeYoung is going to talk to her on the near side. Gives her a quick hug. She's played hard tonight. So two free throws the rest of the way for Valley. And it sends Ellen Litt to the line. Litt averaging five per game this season, 60% free throw shooter coming into tonight. And the first one goes. It's her fourth point of the evening. Knocks the other one down. She's got five, 105 to go. Jags need a bucket and they need it quick. Pratt at the wing, gonna try to get a screen here. They're not moving too quick. <laughs> Valley's just keeping everything in front of them. Pratt, floater, rims out. That's about been how the night's gone. Elise touches it last, it's Centennial basketball. Jags just haven't caught a break getting to the basket here. Dowling Catholic defeats Waukee 60-50 in the girls' game. Waukee with their first loss of the season. Smith gets fouled. Fourth foul by Valleys, but Jags still taking quite a bit of time off the clock. There's 37 seconds to go. And Centennial will throw it in underneath. Pratt, baseline against White, and loses it on the way up. And that will do it for this one. A defensive battle. It'll be the third straight game these two, these two have played that won't reach 45 points. Got to give all the credit in the world to Valley's defense. We knew their offense was talented. They looked good, but, boy, gave Dowling a good... Good game, kept them at bay, and they're going to keep this Centennial team at bay. Jags still very good. They're young, no seniors on the team, but they're going to be a lot of fun to watch the rest of the season. But as for the Valley Tigers, they're going to come in here and get business done here on this Friday night and move to 6-0 on the season and hold their number two ranking for now. It wasn't pretty, but Valley gets the job done. 35-24 is your final score.
Elise Yeager is going to lead all scores with 12. Tylee White will finish with 11 unofficially. And it's a final, 35-24. Valley defeats Ankeny Centennial. Maya Crawford leads the Jags with 10. That'll do it for us. We'll step aside for your game break show and be back for your boys game. Thanks for watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. One on the shot clock. Out fires up a prayer to go. Winkler brings it up, drives in, crosses over, and one. Hello and welcome to the CISN Game Break Show. I am your host, Blake Walker. we got a packed show ahead of you today. Rankings, Player of the Week, Team of the Week, Coach Interview, Player Interview, and much, much more. We'll jump right into our Player of the Week of this last week. Our CISN Player of the Week from Week 1. It is Joey Coppola of Dowling Catholic, the Maroons. Joey had a heck of a game against Ankeny Centennial on December 1st, 29.7 rebounds, 4 assists, and he went 4 of 7 from beyond the 3-point line. A heck of a game over a very talented Ankeny Centennial team. Coppola played well in three games last week. Dowling went 2-1 and one on the week, lost a close one to Valley, 72-69 to, to start the season, then beat Centennial, obviously, 79-64, where Joey went off to 29 points. And then they were able to pull away late on Saturday against Roosevelt in a huge fourth quarter, a 58-43 game. Joey and Dowling Catholic obviously weren't favored coming into this season, but, man, he makes a big effort. Take a look at this layup. Nicely done. Joey Coppola is our CISN Player of the Week. And our Team of the Week last week on the Central Iowa Sports Network will go to the Valley Girls. Valley picked up two big wins last week, a 55-24 victory over number three ranked Dowling. A heck of a win for the Valley Girls. And then a 53-38 win over number 12 Waukee Northwest. Two ranked wins, very well done. Elise Yeager is leading the way, averaging 16 points per game. New rankings released this week of December 7th out of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Johnston comes in at number one, no surprise. The West Des Moines Valley Tigers and Elise Yeager have jumped all the way up to number two. Davenport North, keep an eye on these girls out of Eastern Iowa. They're going to be a tough team at number three. Dowling Catholic, number four. Ankeny Centennial at five. Waukee, still undefeated as of today, is up to number six. Pleasant Valley is seventh after their loss to Davenport North. Ankeny comes in the eighth position. Cedar Falls is ninth. Sioux City East is tenth. Southeast Polk, Waukee Northwest. A couple more CIML teams fit in at the 11 and 12 positions. Cedar Rapids Prairie is up to 13th. Waterloo West at 14th. And Sioux City West out of Western Iowa comes in at the 15th position. We will take a break and be back with your coach interview and player interview, plus much more. You're watching the CISN Game Break Show. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Welcome back to the CISN Game Break Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. The Waukee Warrior boys basketball team is off to a good start this season, 2-1 and one in Week 1. They've hit over 33 pointers in just three games. They're led by Mason Costello, their leading scorer, and Coach Kevin Kanaski has got his boys looking good to start the season. I had a chance to sit down with both of them to talk about the good start for this Waukee Warrior team. Here with Waukee head coach Kevin Kanaski and Mason Costello. First of all, thank you two for joining us today here on the Game Break Show. Coach, I'll start with you. You're two and one on the season. First week has gone by. How would you evaluate week one? You guys shoot the three ball well, you rebound well, but came up short on Saturday. How would you look at this first week of the season? 
Uh, we're happy with things. Obviously, you know, with it being the first week, we have a lot of things we can improve on. But from a coachability standpoint, a playing hard standpoint, I'm really happy. Uh, we have a lot of experience back with our team and they're they're fun group to coach, fun group to be around. So, yeah, I mean, we came up short, didn't play our best. But at the end of the day, it's it's a good wake up call for us after having two really good performances. So we look forward to, to playing two more games this week against two good opponents. Mason, I'll go to you. You started last season on a very talented roster, and this year you're starting again on a very talented roster. But the only thing that changed, or you were the only thing that stuck around on that starting five, and everything else kind of changed. What's that been like? Obviously, you grew up playing with everybody on the roster in general, but what's that transition been like to starting on last year's roster and starting on this year's roster? Uh, I feel like last year's roster, I mean, everyone expected us to do kind of the things we did the first two games this year with last year's team. So it's definitely been a lot different. No one has their eyes on us like they did last year. So we're just kind of waking teams up a little bit. But it's definitely it's definitely a big difference from last year because of how deep we were last year. But I think our team this year is really good. Coach, talk about you got two big games this week, Waukee Northwest and Dowling. First of all, I got to ask, the three-pointers are a plenty. I mean, you guys are almost averaging 11 per game. Is that a game plan or is that just kind of – work with what you got and just kind of go about it? Uh, we want to try to play fast. It's kind of worked out so far that it, it, we've made a lot of them. We have a, a lot of guys that shoot threes and shoot them at a high percentage in practice. We're shooting it well. So, yeah, I mean, we want to play fast. We want to shoot a bunch of threes, but trying to get as many shots up as we can, uh, I think it'll benefit it. And, yeah, the threes kind of just – it's not anything we really talk about in practice. It just kind of works itself out. So talk about these two opponents, Waukee Northwest, obviously – Strong rivalry. It's always a good game when you guys play. And then Dowling Catholic, who's off to a good start. So talk about these two or these two games this week. Yeah, I mean, the Northwest game is always a fun game for our community. And, and you know, it'll be a big crowd. The students really enjoy it. It's emotional, obviously. And uh, it's just a fun game to be a part of. We're lucky to, to have such great support. Um, us and Northwest, our fan support is the best in the state without question. So we definitely look forward to that every year. Um, they're good. I know they're, they're 0 and 2, so people look at them and not, it's going to be a close game like they always are. And it's, uh, they're talented and they'll get it figured out. So then, yeah, like you said, we haven't looked at Dowling much um, in our league and with our schedule. It's bang, we got to get ready to play. Then it's who do we have the next game and try to figure out a game plan for them. But Dowling is overachieving, a kind of exceeding expectations that people had. They're experienced. Uh, I, I've seen them play on film and they have a ton of seniors. So, yeah, another fun conference game that's going to be a challenge on Friday night as well. Mason, you're off to a good start this year, 20 points per contest. You've played in this Waukee Northwest Waukee game several times. Uh, what's it like? I mean, you know, coach talks about the emotion and everything else. How do you either keep out of it or just kind of zone in and get ready for a big game against, you know, the Crosstown guys that you grew up with? Uh, It's definitely, you know, it's definitely it hits you it hits it hits home a little bit. Um, I think that you know whenever we play them, obviously emotions are way deeper and you know it just means a little bit more than every other game. But you kind of have to take it as like just just another game in order to stay focused and stay you know concentrated. But uh, I think over the last couple of years, obviously they've got us more than we've wanted, and this year we kind of want to change the narrative a little bit and get some games back because, you know, obviously they've had the upper hand on us. But I think this year um, we'll, we'll be ready and, you know, we'll show people, you know, that we're a good team too. Well, guys, I really appreciate you sitting down and chatting with me today and good luck this week. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good yeah, one. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Once again, I want to give a huge shout out to Kevin Kanaski and Mason Costello for sitting down and chatting with us. We really, really appreciate it giving us that insight. We'll take a look at your games to watch this week, a.k.a. what's on to watch here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. We'll start out with Tuesday. Waukee takes on Northwest for the Battle of Key. It's been a phenomenal game every single time these two have played, both on the boys' and girls' side. It should be a good one once again at the Waukee Fieldhouse. On Thursday, Valley takes on Dowling in wrestling. The rivalry heads to the mat. Should be a phenomenal one between two very talented wrestling programs. And then on Friday, we got a doubleheader for you. Valley taking on Centennial, and Waukee takes on Dowling in what should be a great basketball night of action. 
That will wrap it up for us here on the CISN Game Break Show. We hope you enjoyed your first game. We hope you enjoy the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Blake Walker. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wins. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. One on the shot clock, out fires up a prayer to go! Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Blake Walker with you here. We're on for the boys game. It's the Valley Tigers at 3-0, taking on the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. I say it's almost like by slam and jamba is how I'd rate this Valley team. This is a high flying offense. Who, oh, by the way, messed around as sophomores last year and went out and won the whole state tournament in Class 4A when they were not the favorite, but they snuck up on everyone. Zay Robinson, Kiki Deng, and Curtis Stinson, both all just phenomenal basketball players, got the job done and won the state tournament, taking down the Waukee Northwest Wolves in the title game. They return everybody pretty much this year. It's a bunch of juniors because they were all seniors last year. It's a bunch of juniors this year. They have their eyes set on a three-peat, not just a two-peat, but a three-peat. On the other side, Ankeny Centennial, very senior heavy. They are led by Luke Winkle, who can make baskets. 22 points per game, 48% from the floor, 45% from the on the three point line. He is the star for Ankeny Centennial. And if Ankeny Centennial wants to pull the upset tonight over, while there's no rankings, Valley is the number one team. We don't have to say anything about it. Valley is the number one team. If Centennial wants to take down the top ranked Valley Tigers, they're gonna need Luke to go off tonight for a big one. And it's right here on their home court, exactly where they want it. There are rankings, though, from Prep Hoop Sports. They do have Valley number one, Kennedy at two, Pleasant Valley three, Iowa City West four, North Scott at five, Downley Catholic six, Cedar Falls seven, DCG eighth, Lindmar ninth, and Dubuque Senior is at ninth. Centennial was in the top five to start the season. They started the season ranked fifth, but have since dropped out of those rankings after the loss to Downley Catholic 79 to 64. We'll step aside for a quick break. We'll be back for your starting lineups and opening tip. You're watching Valley versus Centennial on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmin Ford Indianola. Now through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmin Ford Indianola. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on a 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegades starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade with the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale.
Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network back here at Ankeny Centennial High School for the boys game as Valley, the girls, were able to take the first game 35-24 to over the Centennial Jaguars. I can almost guarantee we'll see more points in this one, but you never know. I, I don't, I don't want to give too many promises, but you got two pretty good offenses here with Valley averaging 71 per game and Centennial averaging 66 per game, both game, both teams only giving up 59 per contest. We'll send it down to our PA announcer for your starting lineups. to go here at Ankeny Centennial High School as the Valley Tigers come to town to take on your Ankeny Centennial Jaguars in what should be a fun basketball game between two high scoring offenses. They expect to see a lot of it tonight. Valley led by Curtis Stinson Jr. The junior will be going by Curtis Stinson tonight. If the name sounds familiar, well, his dad was an all-time great at Iowa State. 2003 to 2006, he played for the Cyclones. Went undrafted in the NBA draft, but played a long, lustrous career in D-League basketball. Played for the Iowa Energy once in a while. Heck of an athlete. And his son following right in his footsteps here this season. So here we go. Valley and Centennial. Let's get going here at Ankeny Centennial High School. Centennial in all white with the black stripes. Valley in all black with the orange and white stripes. And here we go. Luke Winkle at the corner, 22 points per contest, sends it over to Chase Shuddy, over on the wing. And we're gonna have a travel outside on Shuddy. One big star missing from the lineup 
for Valley. Has not played a game yet this season, but Zay Robinson, the junior, was very crucial in the victory in the state tournament championship last year for the Valley Tigers. Had surgery on his shoulder during the football season and has not played since, but is expected to play this season at some point. And that's just a whole nother layer that he can bring to the table if he does come back. But the Tigers have looked good so far. 3-0 on the season. Wins over Urbandale, Waukee Northwest, and Dowling Catholic to start the season. Side, Jaden McGregory hands off to Curtis Stinson. And the defenses are at work here to start. Here's Kiki Dang. Going to go back outside. Three-pointer by McGregory, and that drops. So Jaden McGregory is on the board to start us off here tonight. He's averaging nine points per contest. Centennial offense will look to get back rolling here. Outside pass, Connor Welsh waits up to the basket, and up and good. The senior gets the job done on the offensive end, and here comes Valley back the other way. Both teams only given up 59 points per game. Valley just a little bit more in the offensive scoring output. McGregory down low through contact, can't get the layup to go, and here comes Centennial. Winkle thought about going across court for a pass. Three-pointer from the wing, misses everything. Fight for the rebound underneath. Connor Welsh has it. Goes to a trailing Jaguar, and that's Nick Vasky who will go to the line to shoot two. One of the biggest things a lot of people are really wondering about this Valley team. You know, last year flew under the radar the whole season. Really nobody thought, I mean, nobody. Nobody went to the state tournament and said, yeah, Valley's going to win it. It was all Waukee, Waukee Northwest. And then Valley goes in and gets the job done as Nick Vasky sinks down his first free throw. But now the Tigers, they are the favored team this year in Class 4A. And it's interesting to see how they handle such things. 3-3 is your score here. Two minutes gone by. McGregor here for Stinson, picked up by Vasky. McGregor fire, or McGregory fires a three. That won't go. Tough fight for the rebound. Luke Winkle's got it. Top of the key, Chase Shuddy for three. In and out, long rebound. Kiki Dang snags it away. Valley will push. Kyle Kaysen on the floor here for Valley as well. Brings a little bit of size at six foot. Stinson's floater won't go, but Kaysen finishes and puts it in on the back end. Really nicely jumped by Kyle to get down inside and tip that one back over. 5-3 advantage for the Tigers. Winkle, top of the key shot, three-pointer, won't go. Good defense by McGregory. Kiki Dang will push. Back outside, McGregor for three. That's no good, and Winkle skies for the rebound. Marcus McGregor, a junior, 6-4. A little bit of size down low for Valley. Three-pointer from the wing, rims out for Joey Oki. Student section waiting for something here to drop to erupt a little bit. Four and a half to go. McGregory gets fouled on a bump by Kyle, or excuse me, Joey Oki. I talked about in the pregame, a lot of juniors on Valley. That's well, a lot of seniors for Centennial. Welsh, Shuddy, Oki, Vasky, Winkle, Jensen, all seniors that we'll see playing time tonight for the Jags. And Centennial showed flashes last year. Obviously wasn't the best year, but Winkle and them, a couple really good nights thrown in there, a couple nights of just hot shooting. They're a dangerous team. Trevin Jarrock is on the floor here for Valley. Three-pointer by Kaysen, that got blocked. And we're going to have a foul on a push down low. I think it's on Chase Shuddy. And it is. Trevin Jarrock dra or grabs or brings on a huge height difference. 6'9 on the floor. 
Rock down low, floater won't go. That one's knocked out of bounds, it will be Centennial basketball. Or, ja or Valley basketball, sorry. Casey, baseline drive, floater goes. How about the start by Kyle Kaysen? He's got four quick ones. Tigers on top by four. Winkle trying to get going here. Doesn't have a point yet. Goes full court pass over to the corner. Joey Oki down low through contact. Gets it to fall. Jags cut it back within two. Jarrock. Double down on the post, Kiki Dang left wide, open for three and it won't go. Gregory on the rebound, Casey can't get it to fall and the rebound's tipped out to Chase Shuddy and here comes Centennial and a foul on Jaden McGregory. Winkle had a full court or an open full court in front of him but obviously not enough on it and they'll get it back here past the timeline. Three oh five to go here in the first quarter. Seven five. Valley on top of Centennial. Winkle loses it off the foot, picked up quickly by Connor Welsh, and another foul on McGregory. That's two in the span of a minute. Marcus McGregor checks back in for Valley. Fresh 35 seconds on the clock here for the Jags. Shuddy at the top of the key trying to find someone. Good, very, very good motion defense here by Valley. And now Will Smith is caught in the corner, has to go up top to Winkle. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Winkle almost got it stripped away. Baseline drive, kicked back outside. Kaysen's on the steal. He'll go coast to coast and lay it up and in off his right. How about six points for Kyle Kaysen in this first quarter? Really nice start here. And Valley has the lead by four. Jags offense trying to get going. And a travel by Will Smith. A little bit of a hop and a jump to go. Jags will have a quick substitution. Connor Welsh checks out, and Cale Jones checks in. Cale's the tallest one on Centennial's roster, listed at 6'6". So might, might try to get him going a little bit against Trevin Jarrock. Two to go. Stinson almost got it stolen away. McGregor all the way. Can't get the layup to go. He went right, right through traffic and almost had a really nice layup. Ankeny trying to take advantage here. Winkle all the way through traffic. Got blocked behind by Jarrock. Clean block. Didn't even see him. Centennial offense looking stagnant here to start. I mean, both offenses, not great here to start. Kiki Dang swings it outside. McGregor for three, and it rims out. Both teams a little cold right now, trying to break free of some scoreless streaks here with 110 to go in the first quarter. Cale Jones, top of the key. Tries to back his way inside, instead hands off to Chase Shuddy in the wing. Joey Oki, step back three, that goes. Much needed basket for Centennial, Joey Oki. Was guarded closely, it didn't matter. Knocks down the long three and the lead is one. With 37 seconds to go, about 11 seconds separate the shot and game clock. Good first quarter here, competitive first quarter between these two. As Stinson holds at the top. 
Curtis all the way and a foul on the floor. That's the third foul by Ankeny Centennial. Coach Bob Fontana didn't like that one. So the shot clock is dead, and we'll see if Valley wants to hold here. Jarrock with his back to the basket. Over two, won't go. Stinson grabs the rebound. He'll go up strong for two off the glass, and it goes. And Stinson's got his first basket of the night. Ten seconds for Winkle. Five seconds. Winkle just stops and fades. Long three-pointer is good. We are tied 11 to 11 at the end of the first quarter. That was fun. We'll see you in the second. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on the 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegades starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Welcome back from the quarter break. We're in the quarter number two where Ankeny Centennial and Valley are tied at 11. Luke Winkle showing his range on a long three-pointer as the clock expires. Has tied us at 11. And we got a good one so far. Valley, it feels like Valley has played much better on defense, but Jags just kind of hanging around, doing their job, making things interesting. And we go to the second quarter, tied at 11. Winkle, going to lose it, out of bounds. And Valley basketball. Pressure by Kiki Dang. And Stinson will bring it up here for the Tigers. McGregor in the corner, kicks right back outside. Good ball movement by the Tigers, but better recovery by Centennial. McGregor's tried a couple threes. He didn't want to try it that time. Jarrock down low, ripped away. Nicely done by Connor Welsh. Just snuck it past Jarrock on the back side. He got Jarrock versus Jones, which is a pretty good battle considering the height. Luke Winkle, baseline, right back outside to Joey Oki. Oki fires a mid-range jumper, and it won't go. He was already running back. He thought for sure it was going to drop. Valley on the boards. Kaysen thought about spinning his way inside, and Curtis Stinson holds. Stinson pull-up jumper. Off glass, won't go. Pretty good look. Both teams having a hard time getting down low on the paint. Winkle in and out. Gets fouled on the floor as he head to the basket. Kyle Kaysen leads all scores with six. Joey Oki has five. Your two leading scorers coming into tonight. Stinson has two and Winkle has three. We're not lighting up the scoreboard, that's for sure, as we're going to have a quick stoppage here trying to get one more substitution in. Nick Vasky is in for Kale Jones. Six and a half to go here in the second quarter. Luke Winkle has it here at the top, guarded by Kaysen. 
Shuddy got open for a second, didn't want to take the three. Instead, he spins down low on Jarak and gets the layup to go. Shuddy's first basket of the evening. Already five Jaguars have already found themselves in the scoring column. So evenly distributed scoring so far. Dang, Jarak was trying to get a pass down low to Dang, and Kiki wasn't watching. Winkle stops in transition. Three-pointer died off the back of the rim, but it doesn't drop in. Valley will run again. Jarak to the corner. Almost taken away by Joey Oki. Kiki Dang goes all the way, and the acrobatic layup will go. It's his first bucket of the night. Not it up at 13. Good one so far. Shuddy, coast to coast. Goes off Jarak and gets the and one. Boy, Chase Shuddy not afraid to go up for it. And he'll go to the line to shoot one. Going against Trevin Jarak. Take a look at the replay. He did not hesitate. Had a little bit of a step and gets the and one. Chase will go to the line to shoot one for Centennial. And he drops it in. How about five quick points to start the quarter for Chase Shuddy? Sixteen thirteen Jags. McGregory swings outside. Kiki Dang from the corner. Won't fall. Curtis Stinson, easy rebound. Puts it back up and in. Drops right into his lap. Curtis has got four. Going to have a stoppage. I don't think the clock was moving. Shot clock never restarted. So we'll see how they go about this. How much time came off the clock or if they just give them a fresh 35. So both officials will talk. They're going to put 30 seconds on the shot clock here. And the ball will go out right in front of the bench. Cabrin Klinger is in for Centennial. So a new face on the floor. Klinger is a junior. Under five to go here in the first half. Centennial by one. Winkle works around a screen and swings back outside. Vasky for three. In and out. And the rebound will be out of bounds going Centennial's direction. Both teams fighting hard for every rebound. I'll give them that. Quick throw in here for the Jags. Wide open is a Connor Welsh, and he knocks down the long three. Largest lead of the game for the Jags at four. Three three-pointers so far by Centennial. Stinson tries to do it himself, and he got blocked partially. Tried to go up for it, and on a spin, it didn't work. Winkle carries. Now he's, he's done it a couple times tonight. That time he got called for it. The official whistles him for it. And it's very possible in some cases the coach will just say something to ref like, hey, you know, keep an eye on that. But Winkle gets called for it. Coach Fontana wanted a quick explanation. Stinson thought about going all the way. Dang slides it back over to him. It's out of bounds, and it will be Valley basketball. Thought it might have been a kick violation, but either way, it's out of bounds. Three fifty-eight to go here in the quarter. Two fouls on Valley, none on Centennial here in this second quarter. Casey. Over to Dang. Kiki's going to go all the way, and another acrobat layup won't go. It hits the bottom of the rim. Jags got numbers if they want it. They don't take it. Connor Welsh goes full court pass to Winkle. Winkle for three. It's off. 
Shuddy couldn't grab the rebound, and Kaysen gets it right back. Well, that was a big opportunity for Ankeny Centennial. Stinson goes all the way, and we're going to have a blocking foul as Curtis Stinson went all the way. Fouls on Connor Welsh. It's the first foul of the quarter on Ankeny Centennial. Tigers will throw it in underneath the basket. Trying to get the offense back rolling here. Low scoring, all things considered. Stinson spins off the hip and gets it to go. He's got six. Curtis starting to take things into his own hands here offensively, trying to get his team to the basket. Winkle doubled, swings it back outside. Luke trying to get going as well. His only basket is the three-pointer at the end of the quarter, and Kiki Dang gets called on the foul. Third whistle of the quarter for Valley. Kel Jones checks out, and in goes Chase Shuddy. Couple big baskets for him this quarter. He's already got five out of the eight points that the Jags have scored this quarter. Winkle trying to get down low. Hands off and a foul. Vasky got blocked by Kaysen, but the whistle is blown on Kyle as they say he got a little bit of contact. And Coach Windhorse wants an explanation from the official. Vasky to the line to shoot two. First one drops in. These two points have come from the free throw line tonight. Second one's off back iron. The lead is three for the Jags. McGregory all the way and gets bumped. Whistle starting to pile up here. Both teams now with six combined. Two fouls here on Centennial to Valley's four. Remember the double bonus if you get to five. Stinson hands over to Kaysen. Just over two and a half to go. Jarrock on the low post. They know they have a size advantage. Jarrock gets it knocked away. And Kaysen somehow almost had a heck of a save on a rebound, but a little too strong off the glass. Winkle thought about a step back on Kaysen. Didn't take it. They go full court to the other side to Klinger. Centennial will reset. Every possession matters. Winkle on a quick pump fake, back outside. Chase Shuddy for three, and it won't fall. And out of bounds, it will be last touched by Kaysen, and the Jags keep it with two minutes to go. Oh, it just feels like one of those games, you're not going to be able to make many mistakes because it just feels like we're going to be in for a long one. Valley has been really good in the second half, though, this season. And a moving screen on Klinger. Just shuffled his feet a little too much. And the Tigers will get it back. Good crowd on hand tonight for both Valley and Centennial. Obviously the pet band here tonight. On Gold Knights. And a reach in foul this time on Connor Welsh. Now four fouls apiece. Curtis Stinson will be the one to throw in. Nick, or Joey Oki checks in for Connor Welsh. Welsh with a couple fouls here in this first half, so he'll go to the bench most likely for the half. Valley offense trying to get something rolling here. Kaysen, top of the key, goes all the way across. Rock back outside. McGregory all the way through traffic. Right hand won't go. Knocked around. Somehow Kyle Kaysen comes up with it. He'll try a tough shot for two, and it goes. It's his first points of the quarter. He's got eight. 
He has been so good on the glass tonight. Nowhere near the tallest guy on the floor. It hasn't seemed to matter. Drock gets called on the reach-in foul. And that is the fifth foul by Valley this quarter. And the Jags will go to the line to shoot two. So Luke Winkle averaging 22 a game will go to the line here. And he takes his first. Just his fourth point of the night. You knew coming in it was going to take a big night here for Winkle if Centennial wanted to win this one. Looking good here so far. Winkle, a 69% free throw shooter coming into tonight. He knocks both of them down from the charity strike. The lead is back to three. So the Jags, for the last minute, will be shooting free throws no matter what happens, or two free throws no matter what foul we see, if there is one. Valley is still, or Jags are still one foul away from sending Valley to the line twice. McGregor, hands off to Stinson, nice play. Bucket is up and good. Stinson's got eight. 45 seconds to go. Winkles just stops and fires a three, and he gets it in off the glass. It's a couple times he's tried that tonight. It finally drops. A Gregory wide open in the corner for three. Awkward bounce won't fall. 25 seconds to go. Shot clock is dead, and the Jags lead by four, and they will most definitely hold for the last shot. Very competitive first quarter between these two. Jags have just kind of stayed out front. Valley's gotten close, can't quite finish it. Seven seconds to go, Winkle, baseline, got past Kaysen and puts it up and in. What a final couple minutes for Winkle. Heave at the horn will not go, and there's an offensive foul on Curtis Stinson. As the buzzer sounded, he ran right into Chase Shuddy. And Centennial still gets to shoot two free throws. Because there was a foul, and it's the fifth foul, technically sixth, the entire Centennial bench went to the locker room, but they still have to shoot two free throws because of the foul. So it's an offensive foul, a charge on Curtis Stinson as the buzzer expired, and because of that, does that mean... I thought for a second Windhorse got teed up. The whistle blew toward his direction. They're sh are they not shooting free throws? Oh, they put .2 seconds on the clock. But anyway, I thought they should be shooting free throws, but I guess if it's not an offensive foul, it doesn't count towards it. So the Jags will get .2 seconds on the clock here. Long pass, Shuddy can't put it in. That will do it for the end of the first half. Ankeny Centennial on top of Alley, 27-21. We'll take a break. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Now, through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wins. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade. With the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com.
Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network back here at Ankeny Centennial High School where the Jaguars lead the Valley Tigers 27 to 21 at halftime. Valley in the prep hoops rankings. No official official rankings yet. I don't I'm still not sure if the association will release rankings anyway, but for prep hoops, Valley is the number one team. Most rankings have Valley as the number one team. So Centennial's looking for the upset tonight over the Valley Tigers. Curtis Stinson with eight so far. Jaden McGregory with three. Kyle Kaysen with eight. And Kiki Dang with two. Those are your leaders for Valley. And for Ankeny Centennial, Connor Welsh with five. Chase Shuddy with five. Joey Oki with five. Nick Vasky with two. And Luke Winkle leads all scores with ten. Two three-pointers. The defense has been working hard tonight. I mean, there's not a lot of points. But Centennial has just gotten good breaks. They've gone to the free throw line. Valley's been in a little bit of foul trouble. It's going to make things interesting here as we get toward the end of this one. But Valley has been good in the second half for a lot of their games this season, or all three of their games, I should say. So Centennial cannot get complacent. Valley still just hasn't felt like they've reached that potential here in this game so far. So we'll see what happens as we get going. So far, everything looking good across the CIML. A lot of good games tonight. We obviously saw in the girls game a Valley victory. 35 to 24 was the final score of that one. I know Waukee and Dowling are currently facing off. I'll see if I can quickly get a score on that one. Waukee's off to a pretty good start this season. Dowling obviously almost beat this Valley team to start the year. And that was a big one to say the least. And it looks like Waukee leads down the Catholic 36 to 24 as they are sitting at halftime as well. Let's take a look one more time at Luke Winkle's three pointer here before we go to break. He's really started to heat up a good couple minutes there. He had seven points in the second quarter. This is like a Caitlin Clark type thing. Just go down the court, pull up and bank it in off the glass. Him and Centennial are cooking so far. We'll take a bit of a longer break and we'll be back for your second half of action. Centennial leads Valley 27 to 21. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Get up to $5,500 off MSRP on new Sierra 1500s, plus 0.9% APR for 36 months. Up to $8,000 off MSRP on new Silverado 1500 Turbo Max. And save on the 2024 Equinox with a $500 rebate, plus 1.9% APR for 36 months. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. DeArmondChevyGMC.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Hey you two, we all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snap. Joe, why do you often say Westside Auto instead of Westside Auto Pros? 
because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The Westside Auto lifetime warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, Westside Auto pros. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Now, through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org.
Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. 27-21, Ankeny Centennial on top of the Valley Tigers here. What a game. What a game so far. It's been pretty well documented so far that Valley has been one of the top teams in the state. And Centennial trying to pull the upset tonight over the Tigers. And they're looking good so far. Luke Winkle averaging 22 a game, currently has 10 points. Valley's Curtis Stinson with eight, Kyle Kaysen with eight. We'll see how everything shakes out here in this second half. Both teams did struggle offensively. You can't look past that, but should be a fun one the rest of the way here. And we'll see how the fouls shape out as well. So here we go, two more quarters of basketball to go. And it looks like the pep band is headed out. Always like to have the pep band here, always good music. We're off and running in the second half. Stinson, baseline drive, doubled quickly. Jarrock for three off the side of the iron. It will be tipped out and it will go back to Valley off the Jaguar touch. Rock has it again. Jaden McGregory took a couple good shots in the first, but only one three-pointer. Kaysen waits. Three-pointer won't fall, and it'll be out of bounds. Nicely done by Joey Oki to knock it off of Curtis Stinson. And it is Centennial basketball. Jags trying to pull away here. Coming off a win against Iowa City Liberty, lost to Dowling, 79 to 64. Long three by Winkle, won't go. Stinson, or excuse me, McGregory tried to toss it up to Jarrock on a lob and it's gonna be out of bounds. Valley tried to get a little fancy and it costs them. And the Jags will get the ball right back. Shuddy at the top of the key, hands off to Winkle. Jags by six, Winkle spins, no look pass, outside, Connor Welsh for three, won't fall. Vasky and <laughs> Joey Oki ran into each other. If not, they would have had an offensive rebound, but he stepped out of bounds when they ran into each other. Coach Windhorse once again chatting with the official, like making the carrying motion. I think he was still trying to get after Joey, or at uh, Luke Winkle. Luke got carried, or called for a carry in the first half, but it was only called once. So obviously Coach Windhorst trying to get a little bit more on that. Jarrock on the low post, forces his way down low and has his first points of the night. Winkle picked up by Jarrock, a little bit of a mismatch. Top of the key, a long three by Connor Welsh. That time it splashes home. His second three-pointer of the night. Extends the lead back to seven. Jarrock spinning, baseline, and here comes Trevin Jarrock. He's starting to really get into the ball game. He has great size on the entire Centennial roster. I'm sure he was told that in the locker room. And now they're starting to hit him a little bit more. Winkle in and out of traffic, heads to the corner to Vasky. Nick through contact and gets a chance at a couple free throws. Leaned right into Kiki Dang. Coach Windhorst looking for a Explanation from the head official over here. Says he went straight up or kind of leaned into him just a little bit. So Vasky will go to the line to shoot two and the first one's off the back iron. Vasky came into tonight 72% from the floor or from the free throw line. He's only made free throws tonight and he sinks that one. Three points, three free throws for Nick Vasky. Rock at the top of the key, guarded by Shuddy. 
Stinson. Trying to work his way down low. Spinning, driving, through traffic. Layup won't go. Just a couple of the tough layups having a hard time falling here for Valley. That's been a big difference maker. Oki in the corner travels. Little bit of an extra step in the corner. Five eighteen to go here in the third quarter. And Stinson will walk it up. I said in the pregame I thought we'd see quite a bit of points. Not saying we can't, but I mean it's pretty low scoring considering how these two teams have fared through their first three games. Still early December though. Jurok spin turnaround won't go. Just a couple more slight misses off the basket. But Valley's hanging around here. Six point game. Centennial trying to pull the upset tonight. Shuddy backing down Jurok. Got him in the air and gets the floater to go. What a play by Chase Shuddy. He's got seven. He has not been afraid of the size tonight. McGregory all the way through traffic. Got contact on all ball. Him and Winkle will fight after it and it will go to Centennial. An eight point lead for Centennial. Jags have stayed in control. Winkle all the way. Left hand, no. Chase Shuddy and Kyle Kaysen fought for the rebound, and the foul is going to be on Kiki Dang as he reached in last second. And Dang has got four fouls with 4.10 to go here in the third quarter. Four ten to go, Centennial by eight. Nice quick move to the basket, handoff, shutty right hand, won't go, put back, not gonna go, and Curtis Stinson's on the rebound. Winhorse wants him to push. McGregor back in the ball game, a little bit of size, or more size added for Valley on the floor. Stinson. Fading away, really tough shot, and Curtis Stinson hits the bucket. He's got 10. Timeout, full timeout on the floor. We'll take one with him, Centennial leads. Ask Joe, why do you often say West Side Auto instead of West Side Auto Pros? Because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The Westside Auto lifetime warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, Westside Auto pros. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Centennial Leeds Valley 33-27, Curtis Stinson. Trying to get his guys back into the ball game. Take a look at this tough fader. He's going to back down Nick Vasky and then really high arcing shot. Drops in. And a much needed basket for Valley. With the lead cut down to six. Again, Valley has been good in the second half this year. So 3.38 to go here in the third quarter. Jags lead, and it will be Centennial with the basketball. Walking it up is Luke Winkle. Chase Shuddy at the top of the key will hand off. Will Smith, a couple good minutes here in this quarter, hands it right back off. 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. Winkle hands it over. Vasky steps into his shot. Can't get it to go off front iron. Winkle can't grab the rebound, and here comes Valley. Two on four, and Stinson backs out. 
McGregor, low post, guarded by Smith. Tries to get the bucket to go, won't go. Out of bounds, it will remain Valley basketball. Tough, tough bucket down low for McGregor. Couldn't quite get it to fall. He's still scoreless tonight. He's having a rough night shooting, but he keeps shooting. He's not going to go away. Rock down low, Stinson on the low post, turns, fades. Well, that won't fall. McGregor tries to chase after the rebound. He touches it last. Centennial gets it right back. Cale Jones will check into the ball game for Nick Vasky. Cale was kind of confused. I think him and Coach Fontana Weren't on the same page. Coach was wanting him to go in, and I think Jones was trying to say something else. Just over two and a half to go here in the third. Chase Shuddy, top of the key, goes baseline. He's done pretty well doing that all night. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Winkle fades for three, and he can't quite get it to drop. Touchdown pass. Long call the way. McGregor up and under, and he gets fouled. A heavy Euro step, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Chase Shuddy gets called on the foul. That's his second foul of the evening. And McGregor will go to the line to shoot two. The first one's off. One more upcoming for Jaden McGregory, the sophomore. Heck of a football player, drops it in for one of two at the charity stripe. Jags led by six at the quarter break. The lead is five now. Winkle down low, got it stripped away, gets it right back, tried to hand it off. Connor Welsh saves it. Chase Shuddy thought about a three, and no, it'll be a 30-second timeout taken by Coach Fontana. Centennial looking a little off on offense here, and with 11 seconds on the shot clock, they will take the timeout to think things over. Take a look at the CIML, how everything sits out. Valley 3-0 in the conference, 3-0 overall. Waukee 3-1. Johnston 3-1. Ankeny 2-1. Centennial comes in 2-1. Dowling 2-2. Southeast Polk 1-2. Urbandale 1-2. And Waukee Northwest is 1-3. Waukee leads against Dowling at the end of the third quarter, 52-39 over on the boys' basketball side. Take a look at Valley's upcoming schedule. They get Johnston next week. Trip to Norwalk, Southeast Polk, and then they are off for Christmas break, and then they join back against Waukee at Waukee on the 5th of January. That'll be a fun one out of the break. And then on January 6th, the Surf Pro MVC CIML Showdown. That's going to be a lot of fun. Long three-pointer by Connor Welsh. He's got three three-pointers tonight. Valley trailing by eight. Drock for three to respond, won't go off back iron. Will Smith back the other way. Blocked, but a foul. I thought it was either gonna be a foul or it was gonna be a goaltend. And it will send Will Smith to the line. The officials want them to count the bucket. They're going to go and talk about it. Did he hit his arm or did he hit the rim? On the line for the Jetmires, number 31, Will Smith. So the basket will, well, it's not goaltending. It will be a Will Smith two free throws upcoming. And the first one won't go off back iron. So if anything, it was a good foul by Drock. Second one drops for Will Smith. That's his first point of the night. And 
37-28. One of the largest leads of the game here for Centennial. Trying to finish this thing off with 1.10 to go in the third quarter. A low scoring affair tonight by these two. A Gregory to the corner to McGregor. Kaysen thought about a step back three and instead hands it off. Stinson, nice quick move, runs into traffic, and an offensive foul. That's his second of the ball game. Take a look at the replay. That's the fourth team foul for Valley. Take a look at the replay again. Watch Joey Oki. Yeah, it looked like he was pretty still. Winkle goes all the way back the other way and can't get the tough layup in traffic to go. He wanted a foul. Only one foul committed by Centennial this quarter. Big possession here for the Tigers. Jarrock backs down. Stinson on the handoff. Turnaround layup is good. Stinson's got four this quarter. 12 overall, and Centennial will hold for the last shot, leading by seven. Winkle. Tries to go all the way. Lost it on the way up and another foul on Stinson. Boy, Luke kind of bobbled it on his way up. And Luke Winkle will go to the line to shoot two. And Windhorse wants another explanation from the head official. First one from the charity stripe for Luke drops. That's his first points of the quarter. He's up to 11. Five seconds to go on the game clock here in the third. And Luke knocks them both down. Five seconds. Jarrock up the floor. Kyle Kaysen at the horn will not go. We are through three, and we're going to the fourth. We got an upset alert. Centennial leads 39-30 over Valley. We'll be back. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you, you got ripped off, didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Welcome back to the fourth quarter here at Ankeny Centennial High School. Blake Walker with you here. We're in for a good finish. Ankeny Centennial on top of West Des Moines Valley, 39 to 30. What a game it's been so far. Scrappy basketball by both teams. Centennial has just found the right way to get to the basket. Their shots are dropping, and they're going to try to get away with an upset win tonight. Shuddy, baseline, nobody's home, and he lays it up and in. Easy basket for Chase. He's got nine. Jarrock down low, almost lost it, and it's ripped away, and a jump ball for Centennial will go to Valley. Great heads-up play by Joey Oki. Throwing up, coming. Rock back outside, wide open is McGregory for three, and it rattles in and out. McGregory tries to snag the rebound, and Winkles on the glass. All the way, Connor Welsh lays it up and in. It is all Centennial, 43-30. Valley just can't quite catch a break on any loose balls or anything. Curtis Stinson for three, that's off. Luke Winkle will let it bounce out of bounds. Oh, 
What a night for Ankeny Centennial. 7.05 to go here in the quarter. Shuddy at the top of the key. Trying to extend the lead. Winkle off a screen, won't go off the front iron. And a reach-in foul on Centennial. And the Valley crowd gives an applause for a foul. Update for you, Urbandale wins in a thriller against Johnston, 56-54. I tell you what, Urbandale hung tight with Valley. They hung tight with Centennial. Jayhawks are a good team. And that's a pretty athletic Johnston team they took down. So good win for the Jayhawks. Keep an eye on them, a sneaky team here in the CIML. McGregory, Euro inside. Contact gets the layup to go. Boy, he is a shifty guard. Lead is back down to 11. Chase Shuddy open for three. Splash is at home. What a bucket by Chase Shuddy, who's having a heck of a night. Jarrock tried to get it knocked away, and it's a reach in foul on Joey Oki. That's two fouls already. Take a look at the replay. Nobody played up on Chase, and he just decided to take it. It splashes it home. Six minutes away for a centennial upset here over the defending state champions. And we got a whistle, or the clock, or excuse me, the buzzer sounded when Kyle Kaysen hit a three, and Kyle thought for sure he had a bucket. But there's a stoppage here on the table here. I don't even know what they're going to put the clock at, honestly, but. So I'm not sure if it was a substitution thing or what, but 6.08 to go on the clock, that didn't change. I guess they gave him two seconds, but it's a tough break for Valley, who had a three-pointer there. Jarrock down low, floater won't go. That's just been the night for Valley. All the way down the floor, Will Smith stops, hands back, Luke Winkle for three, why not? It is all Ankeny Centennial, 49-32. The Jags on top of the Tigers, a 30-second timeout. Coach Fontana going to get his guys riled in to try to hang on for the end. Take a look at the replay. Just toss right back up. Will goes back outside, and Luke makes the shot. And, man, what a night for Ankeny Centennial, who has blown this thing open against the defending state champs. Held serve in the first quarter. We were tied at 11. And I tell you what, Valley looked good in the first quarter. I mean, just very good defensively. Looked like they had a lot of stuff figured out. Centennial felt like they were kind of hanging in there. And then it was a little bit better of a second quarter by the Jags. And now Ankeny Centennial has really just blown this thing open here in the fourth. Long three by Dang, won't go. Chase Shuddy skies for the rebound. I will tell you one thing, mark your calendars for the January 16th, because these two teams will play again over at Valley High School, and I'm sure Valley's gonna be eagerly awaiting that one. Five twenty to go here in this one. Winkle, baseline, floater, won't go. Rebound, not gonna go, as it's a foul on Shuddy. I will say he's gotten away with a couple over the backs, and that time they finally get him for it. Stinson will run it up. 49-32, Valley's gonna need a major run here. Stinson underneath the basket gets it to go. Boy, he is just so talented. Can hit threes, can go to the basket.
Centennial remains in control here, not looking to run a ton of clock or let a lot of time slip by easily. And that one's poked out by Kyle Kaysen. That remains Jag basketball. Oki with it in the corner. Quickly doubled, nice pass over to Vasky. Vasky goes all the way and gets the layup to go. His first non-free throw point of the evening. He's got five. McGregory all the way through traffic. Man, that, he is so good at that little Euro step. Take a timeout with Valley, 51-36, Centennial on top. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Get up to $5,500 off MSRP on new Sierra 1500s, plus 0.9% APR for 36 months. Up to $8,000 off MSRP on new Silverado 1500 Turbo Max. And save on the 2024 Equinox with a $500 rebate, plus 1.9% APR for 36 months. Incredible year-end savings at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. DiamondChevyGMC.com. When Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. We have got an upset brewing here in Ankeny. 51-36, Centennial leads Valley. The Tigers pretty much unanimously the top team in Class 4A this year to start. In a lot of the polls, ranked number one. And for good reason, for what they return. Pretty much a group of all sophomores went out and won the state tournament last season. And obviously all come back. But the Jags, of all seniors, are looking good here tonight. Trying to finish this one off. Jarrett gets that one off a of steal. Kaysen for three, won't go. Valley's three-point luck has just not been there. They've hit one three-pointer all night. And that was the first play of the game for Jaden McGregor. Centennial not looking to get to the basket quickly here. Winkle gets it poked away again and another turnover. McGregory, he's going to go coast to coast. High off glass, won't go. Good box out on the floor. And it's eventually still not out. And we're going to have a jump ball and it will go to Ankeny Centennial. Jump ball, possession a couple games coming up, a couple events coming up on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Next week we have Ankeny and Southeast Polk wrestling on Tuesday night. Valley and Johnston will be on Thursday night. So make sure to tune in to the Central Iowa Sports Network to catch all that action. Still a couple more to go here before winter break. So we'll enjoy the basketball while we can. It's always interesting. You know, you get a couple games, you only get about six, seven games in, and then, boom, you hit Christmas break, you get a week and a half, two weeks off, and then you jump right back into it. But a lot of teams use Christmas break to really evaluate. All right, where are we sitting at? You know, how do we, how do we look? Do we need to change anything? Do we need to change any philosophies or our schemes or anything? It's almost kind of a good check-in and see how you're doing at a convenient time. Joey Oki down the floor to Will Smith, or that was Vasky. And Luke Winkle has it at the top. Valley's going to be really pesky here on defense for good reason. Valley still has not committed a foul this quarter. So they have some room to work. Winkle travels. Slipped a little bit on that pivot leg. And the Tigers will throw in. Still not over, but they're going to need a lot of scoring here. Stinson, baseline, off glass and good. He's got 16 unofficially. Joey Oki for three in the corner. That won't go. Kyle Kaysen and Connor Welsh fight for the rebound, and they are going to give this one to Valley. 
So the Tigers get another turnover. And the lead is down to 13. Both teams still with three timeouts. Stinson almost doubled. They go down to Jarrock. Jarrock spins, hands off to McGregor. McGregory fouled. They wanted the end one. The whole bench wanted the end one. They didn't get it. And McGregory would go to the line to shoot two. He's got four this quarter, seven in the game overall. So two quick free throws here for the sophomore, and the first one is good. A 2.50 on the clock here. McGregory knocks down his second. The lead is down to 11. It was 49-32 just a couple moments ago. Centennial's got to get it across. They do. Chase Shuddy at the corner. Again, not going to work a ton of time here. Valley still has not committed a foul. Shuddy, baseline. Back outside, offensive foul. And the ball will go back to Valley. And you know, with the fouls, it really makes it interesting because now that's five fouls on Centennial. So no matter what, Valley is shooting two the rest of the way if they foul. And I think that's what Coach Windhorse is going to talk to his team about here. Because if you're Valley, you might as well just try to get to the hoop because no matter what, you're shooting two or at least try to draw a couple fouls. And it's very interesting because, you know, you don't have your one and one anymore. So, you know, how do you play this? How do you go about it? If you're the opposing team and you're down by, say, seven or eight, or obviously in this case, 11, it's going to take a little bit to get back. But you never know. See what uh, Coach Windhorse is dialing up here. We got a final from Dowling Catholic, Waukee 76, Dowling 48. Waukee moves to four and one on the season. Their only loss coming to Linmar last Saturday. I talked about in January, there is the MVC CIML day at the, used to be US Cellular Center, might still be that in Cedar Rapids. I don't think they have designated teams that they're playing yet, but that should be a fun day between the Mississippi Valley and the CIML. Jarrock with the two, and it's a nine point game. Winkle. Gonna race his way down the floor. Chase Shuddy in the corner, 2.07 to go. Valley still not deciding to foul quite yet. Shuddy didn't want to take the shot. Valley is tempting Centennial to shoot it. But the Jags are staying consistent. That one's almost lost. Picked up by Connor Welsh. Three pointer won't go. McGregory almost got the rebound, and it's a foul on Connor Welsh, and Valley will go to the line to shoot two. I hope you didn't turn it off yet, because now things are going to get interesting. Valley has still not committed a foul this quarter, and the Tigers will go to the line to shoot two, confirmed. McGregory's first is off back iron and no good. I think I talked about the first game I called this season. Of all times, free throws matter the most now because you know you're getting two guaranteed. And if you can get two guaranteed, that's what you need. And McGregor misses, McGregory misses them both, and Valley will foul for the first time. Tough break for the Tigers. Baski gets it into Shuddy. Shuddy going to go all the way, and he sends it all the way across court to Luke Winkle, who did get across the timeline, and McGregory will foul. 
Still got a couple more fouls to give. That's McGregory's third foul. Jags will throw it in underneath. It's a 10 to two run right now for Valley. But is it enough? Jarrock with the steal. He'll go up Florida, Kyle Kaysen. Kaysen all the way, lays it in off glass. That's his first points of the quarter. The lead is down to seven. Joey Oki all the way gets the layup to go. He didn't want to wait. He said, we need points. Back to a nine-point game. Jarrock travels. Tried to get it down low, and he couldn't do it. Huge break for Centennial. Heads up play by Joey Oki to decide to go after the basket. Because he knew Centennial was on a little bit of a scoring drought here. They still are. 12-4 run, run for Valley. Shuddy has it. 104 to go. Under a minute to go. Let's see how they play this. Still a nine-point game. Winkle holds. Valley's still not fouling. Luke goes across the floor. And almost a crazy dunk attempt by Nick Vasky, who tried to go one-on-one -on -one with Trevin Jarrock. And we have Jarrock down on the floor. He got drilled in the nose. It's an offensive foul on Vasky. Do we have a replay of that by any chance? I don't know where in the world this came from. But Nick Vasky almost just had probably a Sports Center top 10 play. Watch this. It's one on one. He wasn't going to get up there anyway, but he sure tried. And it's going to be an offensive foul or a personal foul on Nick Vasky. An offensive personal foul. Intentional foul, if you will, on Nick Vasky. And now Valley will go to the line to shoot two. And then, yeah, we'll get the ball. I've never seen an intentional foul called on a poster attempt. That's interesting. So Kyle Kaysen will go to the line to shoot two, and he knocks his first one down. I have never seen that before. But why not? There's a first for everything. Kaysen goes one of two, but Valley does get the ball back on the other end. Huh. Interesting. Jarrock is off here on the side, walking back to the bench. I don't know if he was bleeding, but he definitely took a hit. He, he asked Coach Windhorse, do I go back in? He said, yeah, just sit down. <laughs> Stinson to Dang, 41 seconds left. Kiki for three, won't go. Kiki fights for the rebound. He's on the floor, and we're going to have a, a jump ball. And it will go to Valley. Kiki has not been playing because remember he got four fouls pretty quickly. So now he's finally back in the game. 35 seconds to go. Centennial by eight. Not the prettiest way for this thing to end by any means, but Valley needs a quick bucket. Luke Winkle almost grabs the steal. He steps on the line. Shot clock is dead. 30.7 to go. Stinson, high at the wing. He'll go baseline. Kiki Dang for three. That's off. Hits the rim. A lot of contact. Ball's on the floor. Who are they going to call it out on? They're going to give it to Ankeny Centennial. With 20.8 seconds to go. 
UCF Valley fouls here. They still have three fouls they have to do. Or two, I should say. Chase Shuddy gets open. They'll toss it over to the other side. That one's knocked in the air. Picked up by Joey Oki. And I think that's going to do it for this one. Ankeny Centennial is going to down the defending state champions and hand them their first loss of the new year. Ankeny Centennial upsets West Des Moines Valley. 53-45 to is your final score. A heck of a game all across the board by both teams. Luke Winkle has a great night with 15 for the Centennial Jaguars. Chase Shuddy, another great night for him. He had 12. Curtis Stinson gives it all he had. He had 16 for Valley. It is a final for Mankini Centennial. The Jaguars upset the Tigers 53-45. to For our entire production crew, I'm Blake Walker. Have a happy holiday, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the Central Iowa Sports Network.